Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to do connection pooling with MySQL and Python. So for those of you who don't know, uh, connection pooling implies that you create a series of connections with a database, and then instead of creating a new connection every time you need one, you just ask the pool for an available connection. Um, this has a lot of performance uh, implications and can actually really increase the performance of your application depending on how you're using it. Um, but you also might run out of uh, pool size, so it's kind of a give and take to make sure you know exactly how much traffic is going through your application and being able to scale accordingly. Um, so I'm going to go over this today using uh, Docker and Docker Compose uh, because it's honestly it's a lot easier to create these different containers and uh, rather than just building it from scratch on my local PC. Um, so the the app for the files here will all be located on GitHub, so you can get them after the fact. Um, but the Docker Compose file is pretty simple. There's two services. There's a DB service and a Python service. Um, each has their own respective Docker files. So here is the DB Docker file, and all you can see is it's the MySQL latest. I expose uh, 3306, uh, the port, uh, which is the standard MySQL port. I also initialize the database, which is called test, as well as set some uh, user parameters. So nothing special there. Uh, within the Python Docker file, it's kind of the same thing, right? So I am installing MySQL client and the uh, MySQL connector Python. I'm also copying two scripts that I'm going to be using. Um, the first is a start script, which just runs my Python script. Um, because after you create a container, if you don't have a process running, the container will die. So if I don't, if I try to, you know, um, SSH into the container, not really SSH, but if I try to go into the container after it's uh, started, but there's no process running, the container will just continuously die. Um, so that's why I have this start script. And then the other one is the import fake data uh, script. So within this script, I'm not going to spend too much time going over it because you can uh, read it yourself. Um, but there's kind of five or six basic functions here. So the first one creates a connection pool. Uh, you can see the, the syntax here. Um, I'm creating a pool. I'm calling an example pool. I'm going to set the number of connections to 20. This can range between 1 or I guess 0, but 1 and 32 is the maximum uh, size for your connection pool. I also want my uh, connections to have auto commit on, which is kind of annoying with uh, with um, MySQL connector, if you've never used it, if you don't explicitly set auto commit to true, then you need to commit, um, do a commit command every time your connection is done. Uh, it's kind of annoying, so make sure you set that to true. Um, here, it's generally the same thing, except I'm not creating a pool of connections. I'm just creating an individualized connection or an individual connection. Uh, a few other functions here is I create a empty table. When my database is initialized uh, in Docker, it's just an empty database, right? So I pass in it a few commands like user parameters and a, a database called test, but I don't actually create any tables within it. So this just creates um, a table called persons, which I'll use to fill with this function, which is called load fake data, which accepts a connection and a names list. Um, and what I do is essentially just, I just pick a random name for my names list as well uh, as a, person ID field, which is just a random integer between zero and what's that, 10 million or 1 million, doesn't really matter. Um, same thing with age, I pick a random number between one and 80, and then I insert, I create an F string, which then I create a connector or a cursor, which I use to execute my SQL statement. I close the cursor and close the connection. Um, so that way I can populate um, fields or entries in my database and simulate you know, real traffic into it. Well, I'll simulate traffic into a database. Um, here you can see the main uh, function, which just has a result, which is just an empty list. My names list, which has maybe, I don't know, 10 names in it. Um, but here's kind of where I want to show you the performance implications behind a connection pool versus uh, creating individualized connections. All right, so what's going on here? So the main function, which we're going to run twice, uh, once with a connection pool and once by making individual connection, um, is pretty simple, right? So I have a, a list of names, um, which I will pass onto the function that requires the names list. Um, in this case, there's going to be two separate sections, one with creating connection pool and one with creating individualized connections. And all I do is I iterate a thousand times um, 
over this function, just creating a thousand fake records. Um, I append the amount of time it takes each record to be created into this results uh, list. And at the end, I just take the average and print out the, the average processing time um, for, uh, throughout the whole uh, list. So that way we can kind of get an idea of how long it takes. Um, since I'm running my this machine on Windows, I thought it would be much easier for everybody if I actually run it in Linux on a EC2 instance in AWS. Um, so first, let's take a look to see which um, um, what we're doing over here. So is again, it's the same file that's taken um, from the Git repository. Um, but let's start by running the individual connections first, because I think it's that's probably the uh, better starting point um, than running the the pooled connection version first. So what you see is I just commented, uh, uncommented out the single connection, and here I just create the single connection here. So next, what I need to do is I need to build my containers. So I'll do Docker Compose build. Um, I've run this before, so as you see, most things are cached. Uh, but the one thing that should not be cached, which you can see down here, is that it's actually pulling and copying the, the current version that I just updated. Um, pose. We will initialize the database first, because uh, that takes a generally a second or two for... Oops, let's do it in detached mode, um, so that way, because I don't want to see the inside of uh, when a MySQL container initializes. Uh, because it's not that interesting, at least in this case. I can have a look to make sure it's up. Uh, we'll give it another second or two because it needs to initialize. No connections can be created until after the MySQL database is successfully initialized. Um, that should be enough time, but here we go. So now I will run the uh, Python service, which will connect to the database and run my script. Uh, it takes a few seconds for this to run because it runs the thousand iterations. And again, we're doing the single connection um, version first. At the end, when I attach, all I expect to see is exactly this. So I expect to see the average processing time, which is that final script in my in the, the fake data script. So here it takes about nine milliseconds to upload um, these thousand uh, entries into my database, which isn't bad. Uh, but let's see if we can get any improvement gains by moving toward the connection pool. Uh, in general, it, uh, the performance gains vary, uh, obviously, depending on the machine that you're using. Uh, generally, what I've seen, though, is it's been about, I don't know, 20 to 30 percent, um, a minimum of 10 percent, generally. Uh, here we go. I will need to rebuild this container. We'll tear everything down and start from scratch again, so that way we get the most fairest comparison. Um, but yeah, like I said, it Depends between 10 and 30 percent, depending on the the machine. But even a 10 percent uh, gain is actually pretty a pretty robust gain um, in this type of atmosphere. But it just gives you an idea of what to, to look for. So okay, there we go. The connection is up, or the database is up. We'll give again a second for it to fully initialize, or else you'll get an an error. All right, that should. Be enough time. Let's take a look. So again, attaching to the new MySQL container with the new, um, so the, the slightly modified script, so that way we use a pool connection. And you can see here it takes about six milliseconds. So before it took about nine milliseconds right here, and now with using pooling it takes about six milliseconds, which is actually a very substantial gain. Um, so that's kind of it. If anyone has any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, for everybody else, please like uh, the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And if anyone has any other questions or kind of any other videos they'd like to see regarding this topic, uh, also feel free to shoot them in the comments. Thanks so much. Bye.